So please join me in congratulating Costas for the Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. 1981. I was known as the guy from New York that couldn't speak English. I came to the Lehigh Valley to build a certain jet port. And in 1982, I was at an event in the ballroom. There was a man on the podium in his tuxedo named Jack Kurzje, who was the CEO and chairman of Mack Trucks at the time. And he was giving a speech. He was like the, the man of the night, or one of those. And uh, I sat watching him, and I, I was mesmerized. And I said to myself, wow, what would I give to be there, do what he does? It was so incredible to me that he would have so many people sitting in that room so silently listening to what he had to say. AFP made that dream of mine come true today. You gave me the opportunity to meet that goal and stand in a silent room today with you telling you about a little part of my life story. That's all I'm going to say about me. I'm just another guy. I'm just another guy trying to do the right thing. My ratio is 70, 30, good, bad, you know. <laughs> but what can you do? I'd rather spend the time I have with you this morning. The good thing about, by the way, evening speeches and morning speeches, you know, in the evening you're going to give a speech and everybody can't wait to go home. Right now, I can take all the time I want because who wants to go to work? <laughs> so. <laughs> so. So anyway, I'd rather spend the time here to talk about children. It's what, it's in my heart. And I know it's in yours too. Little Jake, seven-year-old boy with a horrible cancer, in the 90s, he had a dream. And his dream was to be a G.I. Joe. And we froze. How do we do that? We can buy it. We can create it. So somebody says, you know, we have to go talk to the military people. So we're down by Hershey, the Indian Gap. There is a big military base there. This, this, this colonel is like the chief of the base. He heard Jake's story. He won't match. Two months later, mom, dad, and Jake, two, three members, and myself were going to the base. Arriving at the gate, this thing goes up and down, is there, and uh, there is this big, big guy, a sergeant with a jeep, with his uniform standing like a statue, and the jeep has a blue flag with a silver star on it. They grab the kid out of the parent's car, put him on the jeep, they go, we follow. We go to his quarters, he's gonna stay on base for a week. Hmm, we go on base, and walk into his room, and there on the wall, they are hanging these beautiful three types of uniforms. One with a spot, you know, when you do all these maneuvers. One that you wore every day. And one beautiful blue uniform with a hat with a golden leaf. The short and the one star on the shoulders. And little Jake that day became a one star general in the United States Army of America. Now that's a dream. He flew helicopters, he drove tanks. We go for lunch. The room is like 2,000 soldiers. The kid walks in with his uniform and everybody stands up, you can hear a pin drop. He was the man. Little Jake. Ronald Reagan was president at that time, so through the PR machine of the Pentagon, who knows how, he got wing of the story, and he sent Jake a handwritten letter to my little one-star general, thanking him for looking after him and the nation during his service. Signed, Ronald Reagan, President of the United States of America. Now that's a dream. My little story is about little Kate from the Miracle League, story number two. Little Kate, father you know, who she is. 
who wants to play baseball. She's a little girl like this, and she has little tiny two crutches, and she walks with the crutches. And she's at bat. And she has the angel on the A-field, on the outfield. Is that what they call it? It's Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> what, am I, what am I gonna do? Can't lose it. And looks after little Kate. All the way in case she needs assistance. And little Kate hits the ball. And little Kate walks to first base. The next kid comes up, hits the ball. Little Kate walks to second. And he walks to third. And she's exhausted. It's July. It's hot. And little Kate is struggling to go from third to home. And you can see the angel in the outfield wants to really grab her and help her through. And as he's attempting to do so, little Kate turns around with a booming voice, looking up and says, no, I walk home. Well, that's a miracle. What you do in this room every day of your life, you are helping people come home. You help them score. Your ERA is outstanding. You have the best stats because you keep making hard connections every day of your life. Now I'm standing here and they put me with a group of Lee Boots, Eleni Fowler, Mr. and Mrs. Downley, Priscilla Payne, Father Gambit, who's tried to convert me for the last 30 years. You're getting close. You're getting close. And I'm sitting here and says, really? And for that, the only thing I can tell you from my heart, because I am and I will be and I will die a Lehigh Valley guy. I'm the only Greek Pennsylvania Dutch guy you ever had. <laughs> This is my home, <laughs> and my son who sits here hopefully will carry on from here on and do better than I do because he's smarter than I am. But always remember this day and what you did for me to validate that what I've done has recognition, and you all need to use that as an example and not stop what you're doing every day of your life because what you do is God's work. Thank you for your time. I know you want to go to work, <laughs> even though it's not fun. God bless you, and I'm very, very privileged and honored to have this award. Thank you so much. <laughs>